Hi there, welcome to another video. Um, something a bit different this time. Um, I thought I'd give you a sneak peek at something I've been working on for the past month or so. Now, um, as I'm sure you're aware, um, I released, um, I've, I've, I created a tool called Arcade Game Designer back in 2008. Uh, there have been various um, versions of it uh, over the years. Um, the last one uh, was, was version 4 and upwards, up to about 4.8. But um, version 4 was actually released in 2013, which is a, a, quite a while ago, and it hasn't had a serious update uh, since then. Obviously, Alan, Alan Turvey's been um, doing his stuff on AGDX. I took it up to 4.8, uh, but... Um, you know, it, it, it really wants a new version because some of you obviously aren't using um, MPAGD, multi-platform arcade game designer, because not everybody has a Windows machine. Um, so I thought it was about time that AGD had an update, a serious update, something that will blow AGD4 and all its variants out of the water. So with that in mind, about a month ago I sat down and started rewriting it or rewriting large chunks of it. I mean, the, the compiler has been rewritten from scratch. I didn't start with the compiler and start messing about with it. I just started again from scratch and rewrote it totally differently. There's a new compiler, and it is far more powerful. You'll notice other things I've done. The engines, um, there's a lot of new stuff in the engine, um, some surprising stuff which you probably won't expect. Um, there's there's a, quite a bit of AG, MPAGD code in, in the um, the engine, I must admit. Um, some of the functions from there. There's no read and data, um, so MPAGD still has that, and it's it's far more powerful tool than AGD, but um, AGD4 was, but um, AGD5 is, is going to have a lot of stuff that is brand new uh, and uh, really, hopefully, exciting. So, um, let's uh, show you um, a bit of... Oops. Um, what I've been doing. N not all the editors are in yet. Um, not all of them will make it across. One, there's one or two new ones, and lots of the editors have been rewritten or, or, or amended uh, and, and had, added, had, had a lot of new stuff added to them. Um, let's go into the events. And how do we do this? Let's have a look. Game initialization. In fact, before we do that, I'll show you. There's nothing there. That's just. The, the basic sort of startup um, thing. I'm not going to talk to you about sprite sizes or anything like that in this video. Um, that may be for another another time. Um, but um, yeah, back to the events. So what we want in the game initialization is some code to do something different. Now, um, what I'm going to show you is that um, the compiler is completely different. It's an expression evaluator now, whereas it wasn't in um, AGD. Now, AGD had, I think, four operators. That's all it had. Uh, I there was a, an equal, uh, a not equal, and I can't remember which way around this was, whether it was greater than or equal to and less than, or whether it was less than or equal to or and greater than. But th there were two of those. Two of those operators were missing anyway, the greater than, less than ones. You couldn't use them. MPAGD fixed that. That had six operators. This one has a dozen more, more than a dozen and counting, and I'm really enjoying putting new ones in. Um, so you, you've got a whole load of, of uh, operators. Um, you, you know, you've got or and exclusive or and and, and uh, you've got the full complement of comparison operators. Uh, it, it basically operates a little bit like Sinclair Basic um, in that sense. But all, you, you don't have very complex expressions. All you can have is, is uh, are two uh, sides to an expression with a single binary operator between them. Um, although one of the new innovations in this compiler is that whereas in the old AGD compiler you your arguments could only be... Um, uh, they had to be numeric, they had to be sprite parameters, or they had to be global variables. Uh, well, you've got all of those three in this now, but you've also got functions which uh, return values, which are part of the expression evaluator. So you've got a fourth option in there now, uh, and those functions operate in two modes. Some of them, some of them, a lot of them are just eight bit, but some of them are both eight and sixteen bit. Uh, now that 
is the new innovation because whereas the AGD4 compiler uh, only handled 8-bit this one does some limited 16-bit um, stuff so I'm going to show you a little bit about that now so what we're going to do is we're going to um, write a new display routine in the new um, compiler with the new compiler so um, one of the innovations is that you can now pair the global variables together. Now there are 24 global variables, A to Z, with X and Y missing because those are sprite parameters, uh, and you could pair those 24 8-bit variables together to form 12 variable pairs, rather like you do in registers in Z80, but I'll, I'll not confuse people with that because not everybody uh, speaks Z80 assembly language. <coughs> but what I'll do is I'll show you, first of all, um, let's decide where we want, well, we'll write a new display routine. You don't have to use um, the ones that are built in. So we'll put the cursor at the top left at, you don't have to do let line equal or let column equal, at zero zero will, will, will do the job uh, on this, rather than like you, you can do that in um, MPAGD. Uh, and then <coughs> what we do is we assign with let, let a be, that's the variable pair, first variable pairing, a and b are paired together, c and d, e and f, um, <coughs> equal, and then we need a function to give us an address, and we have a function to give us a screen address, it's scrad, scrad which will um, give us the address of the current cursor position. So I could change this um, to say 0, 010, and it would give us the address of the tenth character along the screen. But let's keep it at the top left for now. So that's going to put the screen address in the variable pair AB. So we've now got a 16 bit variable AB that has the screen address. So what we'll do is we'll write a little routine, I think, to display a little dithered block shall we let's do a little chessboard dither uh, so we'll do four repeat four <clears throat> and then we'll use one of the new commands poke uh, and then we'll, we've got a b we've got the screen addresses in a b and the value we're going to poke to it is the first dithered pattern let's copy that do a second of the pattern, and in between, what we need to do, if anybody understands how the spectrum screen display works, if you're moving down within a character cell, um, the next address is always 256 bytes on, uh, and in a variable pair, that means you just add one to the second variable. So, but add, subtract, multiply, divide are not used for 8-bit variables anymore. <coughs> They're used for 16-bit pairs, so we still have those functions, but they're only for 16-bit operations. The expression evaluator will do all that for us now for 8-bit stuff. So all we do is we let b equal b plus 1, um, and that should take us to the next screen address. Don't worry if you don't understand how the spectrum screen display is organised. Um, that should do it for you. So that should display as a dithered block in the top left of the screen. Oh, let's put a little wait key in there as well. Um, so that we have, to, yeah, we can see it before it starts. Let's just check that that's all. No, oh, that's the wrong event. Nope. It was um, initialization, wasn't it? At 00, zero AB equals scrad. Gives us the screen address. Repeat four times. So the first dithered block, the pattern, second dithered pattern. Yeah. Okay, I think that should be good. So let's now go to the um, to test that. And there you go. You've got a little dithered block in the top left of the screen. And we wrote that little display routine ourselves. So we didn't have to display, you didn't have to use pop block, we didn't have to use message um, or anything else. So it's a very powerful little um, bit of functionality. I'll, I'll be 
Um, th th there are other uh, functions that um, you can use as well. There's a routine for, to retain an attribute address at the current cursor position or the, um, the, the, the block map address that will give you the, the block map, uh, the, the block type at any particular location. Uh, there's a new block type, uh, collectible blocks by the way, those have been added. Um, so that's all good. There's another one that'll give you the uh, first byte of a message so that you can, or, or its address, um, so you can uh, display characters one at a time if you want, you know, like typing, you know, typewriter, typing out the messages um, as you can on MPAGD. Uh, there's another one that retains the address of uh, an object's whereabouts, which will also enable you to um, find its particular position on the screen and even its colour uh, because objects have colours now like they do in MPAGD. So um, there's all of that coming in. I'm going to be writing some trigonometry functions as well so you can use trigonometry um, with 60-bit pairs so that you'll retain um, the, the integer in the, the high byte and the, the the, the fraction in, in the low byte, and so you'll be able to do um, write games like uh, Thrust and um, BMX Simulator, Grand Prix Simulator, that sort of thing. That, 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 that'll all be built in, so there'll be no need for, for user routines or any of that. Um, so long as you, you know, you're, you're confident with that, and I'll, I'll be um, explaining it, I, I suppose, when I once I've uh, once I've released it. Um, but it, yeah, it, it's going to be a lot more powerful. So as I say, this is intended to blow ADD4 and all its variants out of the water. Just as ADD, each version of ADD that I've, I've released has, has um, done to its predecessor. So, and it, it's about time I got around to doing this. So yes, very, very powerful um, tool. Um, there are other um, things I could show you, but I, I don't think I'll... I'll show you in, in this video there, there's new editors and new um, new functionality and, and stuff but I'm, I'm not going to, to go into that just yet I'll, I'll save that for another video I think so um, yeah thanks for uh, thanks for watching and um, I'll uh, see you again in another video cheers